Okay, here we go. Take number six. Take 85. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Dot Dot Doc. I'm Ian, your host, and this week we'll be talking about Confessions of a Superhero. It's a 2007 documentary following the lives of four people who dress up like superheroes on Hollywood Boulevard. I'm joined again this week by Matt. Hello, Matt. Hey, and how's it going? <laughs> it's going well. I'm glad. This is, uh, sorry, yeah, this is like the sixth time we've tried to do this, and it's... I, know, I think we've got this it. This is the we best it, it's gone so far. This is the best it's gone so far, and I'm not recording anymore. Right, we're on uh, a roll, we're on a roll. We're doing it, we're doing it. So, Matt, what do you think of the documentary? Uh, I really enjoy it. It's uh, yeah. just... Uh, it, it maybe because of its length as well, but it, it feels almost like a film. Like, you know, obviously every documentary is a film, I suppose, to a degree, but do you know what I mean? Like, it feels, it, there's just a funness to it. Yeah, I've got like a, I'd say a personal story with this film. Um, I remember I was living in the shared house um, and we used to, we discovered this on like Netflix and we just become like obsessed with it. It's, <laughs> such a fun like drinking documentary if that makes any sense Definitely. where you just drink just everything about it. i love everything about it it's um the like the people in it just they're, they're kind of just larger than life yeah um there's a lot of layers and, to it like like with yeah. the people like a lot of layers to the documentary as well um and batman on his own, I just want to have a whole documentary just dedicated to I want him. to have he's... a beer with him. <laughs> he's incredible. He's, he's just such a character. Yeah, um, yeah I'm interested to see uh, what he's done since in the poster. That's what I'm interested to see. Like, um, Yeah, because at the end, like midway through this, we're going to look into what's happened since mm-hmm. and go and maybe into what everybody's done since and that and what's happened because of the documentary. But anyway, let's just get into it. Um, Superman is Christopher Lloyd Dennis. And he kind of comes across like he's trying to become Superman. He has like the, it's a, uh, it's a, the right. It's an absolute obsession for him. He what was he walking down the street telling like Ghost Rider how to act and how to how to be and how to present himself. Do you know, that's that's possibly one of my highlights of the documentary. That that scene with him and Ghost Rider. Um, just the, the conversation they have. Like, I've, I've made a little note of it uh, here. Um, and it's uh, Superman basically saying, uh, just remember, superheroes don't smoke. It's an image. And then you have Ghost Rider saying, except Ghost Rider. Superman follows with, no, Ghost Rider doesn't smoke. Ghost Rider says, he's made a fire. Superman says, but still, he doesn't smoke cigarettes. But just the way that scene plays out, like, I love it. Absolutely love it. The <laughs> fact that the Ghost Rider is trying to justify it by by being made of fire is just like that. It's just brilliant. Like, what 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 a moment to capture. Like, that's what one of the yeah. one of the great parts of this documentary is it it doesn't feel forced. Um no. it, it feels like it is following this this group of people and you're getting a real or as real as you can get image into their life, really. Well, I found out that the director of it, he basically was, he's like a, he was directing like commercials and stuff down the street from uh, Hollywood Boulevard. And he would see them all standing out there and that. And he ended up like one day between like shooting, he would go and film, you know, like uh, and go talk to them. And then like, he wanted to find out their, well, the story and how they are as people and he was you just become like you know obsessed with it he was filming it just in his own spare time between work mm-hmm. it was quite cheap quite easy to make because it was like just filming them and just filming in their house alone is just in- incredible just seeing that how they live well it's superman's house like it's just it's a treasure trove like it's an absolute gold mine for any huge superman fan like it's a gold mine he's, he's just got so much memorabilia like but that's where you see the obsession coming through like it's it's more than just a job for him it is it is a way of life like he in some 
in some weird way, I think he really deep down believes he is Superman. The one thing I noticed that he did say was uh, in their house, he said that there was 80 to 90,000 pounds worth of like merchandise in there mm-hmm. uh, of Super Hit, and that's over the last four years. Yeah. Um, and I was thinking they must absolutely rake it in on, you know, on the good days and stuff. And I, I didn't realize there was also it's not but a well year round. But then how how well, is how it? long had he been with his um uh, well at the time his girlfriend? Does it say how long they'd be t- been together? Because uh, obviously, if she's I'm not yeah I'm not too sure. Maybe I suppose if she's because she seems quite she seems like pretty a, doting uh, towards him. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, it's weird. Their relationship kind of seems like she's almost analyzing him. Yeah, she, it's like yeah, it's almost like. Because um, that is part of her profession. I I did I kind of got that vibe the whole film. It was like she was talking about him whilst he's in the room, and it's kind of felt like she was like you know she was talking about him like he wasn't in the room. Mm-hmm. It was, um, and they also claim that the the amount of that the merchandise in there is probably worth like a million. Yeah. Of uh, and do you reckon? Do you reckon it would be worth that? I mean, a lot of the sign stuff. <laughs> I uh, mean. It... A lot of the sign stuff, you would get good money for that kind of stuff. Like, and especially, you know, if uh, after Christopher Reeves died, then the, the the price on all that kind of thing just goes up exponentially. Um, oh yeah, a signed signed vinyl or something. Yeah, of the soundtrack of him. But again, a, 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 a lot of yeah. the other memorabilia he has, a, a lot of you know, the value comes in the condition of of it being boxed and the condition of the box. And so it really would depend on how much care he took of all that stuff. And it kind of looks in the room like, well, it's just stacked. Like you can't move for Superman stuff. Like it's just everywhere. Um, yeah. It, it's like a, a messy Superman museum. <laughs> like, but it's incredible. It. It's incredible. Like, I I want to go in that room. I I, I want to you know look at all that stuff. I it is just incredible. How much would you pay for one of his Superman dioramas? Like the was it the <laughs> these dioramas that he made? Yeah, di- yeah, dioramas. Oh well, I mean, just I I wouldn't pay a lot for it, but I'd happily <laughs> I'd happily take one if he was giving it away. Um, because even that part, when like, because I think that I think it's when the other characters of the documentary uh, describing uh, Chris, uh, Christopher, uh, Superman, yeah. and they're describing him and des- describing his his obsession, um, and then that's the time he comes out with that, and it's just, yeah, yeah, he just. I don't know. He kind of he comes across like the the leader in the, um, or the kind of go to guy in the documentary. He kind of seems like the one that the police, the police of the place, uh, respect, and you know they know that he's going to be the one to follow the law. Yeah. Um, and like there was a part where um Marilyn Monroe comes up to him and she's like kicking off of that. Oh, all these tourists have come up to me and not one of them has tipped me. Yeah. Um. And I can see the frustration because, you know, you're out there to do a job and you're trying to make money, making it ends meet. Oh, 100%. Um, 100%. But I, I, I feel as well like um, a lot of, what is it? Because they, they're, const- they're constantly saying, uh, we, we do work for tips, you know. Um, you know, just little <laughs> dropping little subtle hints. Like, but they're not even meant to say that. They're, they're not, not meant to ask for tips whatsoever. Um, and you can see, like, there's almost this, conflicting side of superman like because obviously he's trying to portray this good clean character um but the camera's on him more than a couple of times within the documentary where he's basically asking for tips um yeah and i i just find that funny as well because you know i suppose if you don't ask there would be a lot of people that would just go oh well this is free then why am i gonna pay um and it is their livelihood, so you can understand it, but it does make me laugh the amount of times they're saying it. Yeah, but uh, they'd make their money otherwise. They need to make people aware of it, and um, and 
yeah, just you know, someone over here's old oh, tip. They get the money ready, and then it's kind of like picture. There you go. Here's here's a dollar. Yeah. Um, I don't know how much you meant to tip. Uh, just I guess anything you can afford. Um, what do you reckon about the story of his mum coming up? Where it's uh, Sandy. Is it Sandy Dennis? Mm-hmm. Um, she, yeah, she's like this uh, famous actress, and I don't know. I mean, do do you reckon that he was? lying about it possibly uh, there there is like there is like a, an underlying kind of dark past with all of the characters i feel like it's it's subtly portrayed throughout the documentary um and i feel this is part of his um with part of like what i said at the beginning with the, you know having many many layers this documentary but i feel there is like i i I do wonder if he is her son. Like you're kind of left <coughs> kind of thinking like, because again, you might, I, I suppose to a degree, you you kind of want to believe it or you, you have no reason not to believe it until people start saying that he isn't. Um, but you want to believe it, I suppose, because you have this image of him as oh, it's, it's Superman is good. Um but yeah, I I came away from the documentary. I mean, it's not the first time I've watched it, but it's been a while since I last watched it. Um, but I came away, and I think I probably did the first time I watched it, thinking that he's he's not the son of that lady. But I could be completely wrong. I don't know. It may have been found out in the time since then. Um, but yeah, it just feels like he's making it up. And then when uh, the documentary filmmaker questions him on it, and or well says that people have said that he's he's not the son. Um, he comes out with, well, that's their opinion. <laughs> and I just think, well, you wouldn't say that. You, you, you know, uh, it just comes across there's maybe a, a bit of a, a white lie going on there. I, I don't know, it's weird, because I did think that he did look a bit like the, well, the one woman, like uh, saying... Um, you know the cousins and stuff. Was it his? Was it the cousins? I think it was. Yeah. Or was it the aunties? Aunties. Yeah, yeah. Or that side. He did resemble <coughs> the family a little bit, I think. Yeah, I suppose. But then, why would they just? Why would he be written off the way he is? Like, or again, maybe that could be the dark side of his. I don't know. It's um, it's a tough one. Hopefully, hopefully, some more infos come out about that. Yeah, we'll, we'll check that in the post. Um, but one thing I did think, though, was do you reckon he's had work done? What, to look like... like uh, to look like Christopher Reeves? No. I No? I kind of... I thought his face kind of seemed a bit... His, there's, there's, uh, there is an oddness to his face, but I just... Hmm. No, I... It doesn't stand out to me like... I mean, again, if this was made in 2007, obviously... You know that kind of surgery's probably come a long way since then. Um, but no, like there's an oddness to his face. I agree there, but I think it is just his face, and not in a mean way either. Like just there's there's something quite odd there. Um, but no, I I don't think he's had work done. Yeah, who knows? Um... Yeah, I don't I don't know. There's a like there's there's so many moments. Like uh, he's such a, he's so fascinating a character. Um, like there's moments where his girlfriend's like uh, describing things about him. They're sat on the couch talking, um, and he's c- kind of sat there like smirking. Um, and the camera like it goes tight on his face and like close up. Um, and yeah, he's just smirking away, and he's he's like answering her, but with like uh, you know things relevant to Superman. Like, uh, uh, like, oh, I, I answer, I, I didn't understand that. Oh, you would in Kryptonian or something like that. Um, but he's like, just got this little like, it's almost like a childlike smirk of, I, I don't know, but it's just, it, he's a fascinating character. Yeah, like any mortal man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it is, it's, it's, it's like he's hiding that laughter of like, yes, I got it there, like. But again, that that kind of speaks, I suppose, to the obsession is is probably on his mind twenty four seven. 
So <laughs> the bit where he goes to um, Metropolis and he, uh, you know, enters the Superman competition. Mm -hmm. Like, how gutted were you when he didn't win? Did you expect him to win overall? Or uh, I kind of thought, um, because obviously he's going there with a camera crew, you know, that could, to the organisers of the event, that could, you know, for them be like, bring some attention. So I thought maybe he's going because he knows he's got it won um, because he's bringing a camera crew and stuff like that. But yeah, it's kind of heartbreaking <laughs> like, for him not to win it. Um especially like there's moments when he's talking um, about when he found out about Christopher Reeves passing away and you can tell it really hurt him deep down. Like his, his voice kind of breaks, you know, in, in parts where, you know, where it's obviously emotional for him when he's talking about it. Um, so it felt like that was kind of a big moment for him, although to a degree he was kind of cashing in at the same time. Um, but, you know, that's, I suppose that's part of the business he's in. Um, I mean, I suppose he does get all those headshots printed and then goes down there. Yeah, but, um, yeah. So it's like but, he 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 is cashing in, but you know that's the business he's in. That's his livelihood. He's got to do what he's got to do. Um, he's also paying his respects, I guess. Though, yeah, so. of course, of course. Um, but yeah, I, I it is heartbreaking. Like the the moment where where they're calling out the winner. Um, and you realize it's not him and they go up, they kind of go close, you know, camera shot on him. And it is, it's that, it's the perfect uh, kind of mirror to Ralph Wiggum and his heartbreaking on the Simpsons um, and uh, Bart, yeah. you know, rewinding it so you can see his heart breaking at that exact moment. That's what it kind of felt like. It was like, oh man. Um, so yeah, it's kind of sad for him. Yeah, it's the was it the Spider Man? Uh, he uh, he got, was like second or something, and his costume was like really cool. And then then it like it holds on his face for a while, and then you then you see who won, <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> and, and it's like old school <laughs> Batman. Yeah, and it's like it's not even good. Like it's it's like it's like I had a Batman outfit when I was a kid. Um, and it was that old school grey kind of uh, Batman, and it was awful. Like you know, I I didn't grow up watching that Batman. I grew up watching you know Michael Keaton, um, you know Batman from the films, uh, cool black suit. Uh, but yeah, this guy winning, I was just like, oh my god, like yeah. that be that would be even more heartbreaking, especially when it's in Metropolis. Uh. <laughs> But it's it's, but it's 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 heartbreaking slash comical, like. Uh, but that is this documentary as a whole. That there's so many ways to feel about this documentary. Yeah, it's. I don't know. It doesn't stop him, you know, proposing to no, uh, exactly. his wife at the time. Like, to, was it Bonnie? Mm -hmm. Um. And then getting married. I don't know if it was on the same weekend or what, because it like it kind of looks like it's the same time. Yeah, and it looks he, like he it's definitely... there. Yeah, um, but he yeah they get married in front of the giant Superman statue, um, and... which makes me think it could be possibly then. I don't know. And she's in a wedding dress, and he's wearing his Superman outfit. Like, <laughs> which oh, yeah, she wouldn't have a wedding dress, would she? Like if it was a spare of the moment, you wouldn't be like, "Oh, I've got a wedding dress in the back." It's well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it could have been, so. been the following year, probably. Uh -huh. But no, just the fact that he's wearing his Superman uniform uh. <laughs> to his wedding, like it's just wow. Like that's dedication. There's moments so, in the documentary where uh, they go close up, like it's obviously you know out, out in the Hollywood Strip, like it can get quite hot at times. Um, and they showed a sweat from Superman. It's just like, it's just, even that's quite jarring from what you'd expect. You know, you don't expect to see sweaty armpits on Superman, do you? Like, but at the same time, I'd go for that photo. Like, yeah. <laughs> Especially on the day where it's like a hundred, was it 106 degrees? Mm -hmm. um, that was pretty insane. Just like uh, where he takes, he takes Wonder Woman um 
back to his apartment and and like I like how it makes a thing saying that uh it it puts on the screen that like uh was it Bonnie's asleep in the next room like it's like, <laughs> like a big taboo kind of thing yeah like, it's, it's it's only, shower- yeah she's only using the shower like to cool down like yeah it's, it's what anybody would do it's fine but the thing I had to laugh was after that was when um the Hulk saying that. He almost black. He almost blacked out in like his suit, which is one hundred and thirty degrees. And and, and that, thinking... that is like the warmest out of all of them. That suit must be just unbearable. Like it's full on, yeah. like with a full like, you know, part you put over your your skull. Like oh. it's crazy. It's it's just like it made me feel. Why didn't Superman invite the Hulk back to his apartment? <laughs> yeah. for... For a shower, he was, I feel like he was the most deserving. He could have, like, completely <coughs> drenched and still been completely, you know, fine and stuff. You know, he's that's he's at a risk of dying in that suit, probably. Oh, yeah. But I, I, I feel as well, like, uh, I, I didn't get his actual name, um, but the, the guy playing the Hulk. Um, oh, Joe, Joe McQueen. Joe McQueen. Yeah. Like, I kind of, I, I feel he's the most likable in the documentary. Um, oh, kind of the underdog and you kind of root him for him um, and obviously you know by the end what happens happens with him um, well let's get, let's get let's start talking about him now actually because yeah. I think we've kind of covered Superman the one thing I wanted to say is that Superman he says he never smokes in his costume and then at the end of the documentary <laughs> smoking in his costume so but then again it, there's, it there's a cool. part in there where you see in his um, in his room as well there's an ashtray literally full of cigarette butts like next to a marlboro red packet of cigarettes um so yeah it kind of the mask slips as as the documentary goes on a bit with um with superman yeah but saying that he doesn't ever smoke in, co- um, in costume out and about so no no I think, exactly i think, I think uh, is he shouldn't be reprimanded for smoking in his you know daily life anyway like but you know he, he takes it seriously you know when i'm working you know, I have an image to uphold. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, and I respect that. It's, it's cool. Um, Joe McQueen, who is the Incredible Hulk. Uh, so he said that he sold his Super Nintendo to get <laughs> to LA. Um, One of the best lines of the whole thing. Oh, that's... Yeah, it's brilliant. And then he gets there and it's the LA riots at the time. And he has to just hide out in the hills, um, which is... I don't know, that's probably the, yeah the worst time to sell you Nintendo, you know, and then <laughs> yeah. and then end up in the LA riots where like it feels like end of the world looters and mm-hmm. all kinds of terrible stuff happening. Um, but I, yeah, as you said, I feel like he he definitely comes across the most likable um, in he's, it out of all, all he, the people. He he's like it, I don't know what it is, but you are you're just kind of like or I I I felt like after. And it's not long till uh, like when you meet him, it's, it just seems rather like not so overly out there to a degree. Like, like obviously you've got to be a bit out there to do what they do. Um, but yeah, he's just, uh, I don't know. He comes across as just a dude trying to make it. Yeah. It he, he kind of seems like this is a stepping stone to where he wants to be. You know, it feels like, <laughs> He's the one in, apart from uh, Wonder Woman in it, mm-hmm. uh, they're just, they feel like they're trying to get work like yeah. elsewhere. It's just like a kind of a temporary job. Yeah. Um, this is like, you, you know, some actors and actresses, you know, waiter and waitress um, in, in between acting work. You know, these guys choose to go out and do this. It's just a different line of work, isn't it? Like for them, as you say, like a stepping stone. What do you uh, think about his? Oh, sorry, gone. I was going to say, I suppose as well, like to get noticed, perhaps, like m- maybe not for the Hulk, <laughs> like, yeah. but for Wonder Woman, you know, her face is out there as well. And LA, you know, you you hear stories of people just walking down the street and going, "Oh, you know, I want you for my next movie or whatever." Or... So it's yeah. a place where dreams can come true for some. Yeah, I kind of, I don't know, I'm not too sure about. Uh, the Hulk getting picked up on the street for no, exactly. <laughs> it's not going to happen accident. for him, unfortunately. Maybe no, he's... when he's passed out and they've took the mask off of him. <laughs> Poor guy. 
he seemed he seemed nice enough when he was walking along the street, just talking to randomers. Um, at, like when he's just crossing the street, he's like, "Hello, you know, how you doing?" And stuff to just people he's walking past. Hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, what I was gonna say, um, he, what do you think about his uh story about how he was homeless for four years and it shows you him going back to the old places he was, uh, like slept, um. And his like tales about how he would have to go to McDonald's, wash himself up before going to a audition where he just gets laughed at because they're like, you know, your face doesn't work. Yeah, your face Hollywood doesn't work, or you know, he yeah. says like a, some parts of his like hygiene wasn't all there at the, at the time, and you mm. know, it must be super tough if to pursue that dream still and oh can, definitely and you can you barely know, feed yourself and... and and that is that is true dedication you know that's someone that has gotten you know i've I've given up everything to to chase this you know i'm not gonna let the fact that i'm homeless and you know really really struggling but i'm still gonna chase like it's in it's quite inspiring really yeah and he seemed like he really I mean, he didn't have much in his house, from what I've seen. Uh, it was like kind of just mattress on the floor, and there was a couple of um, <laughs> Incredible Hulk figures and <laughs> stuff in the background, which I imagine are probably like the gifts. He might, I don't know, he might be. Um, I, he's, it wasn't like a collector, right? I didn't. He didn't come across like a collector. No. Um, uh, so no, it's, it's it's a gig for him. Like, but, yeah. like, why why you would choose that gig in that costume? I don't know. Like, go for something cooler, man. Like, cooler as in you know more fresh air. Um, but what do you, you know. what do you think he could play like instead? Like if he was doing like a face uh character, uh, that's what they call it, like Disney, where you you are just the whole character. You're not just in like a suit. You're a face character. What? So your face works for that character. No, so you uh, look like, like that character. No, if you meant like say Snow White at Disneyland, um, it, it would be someone who's trained to be just like Snow White. Uh, they have the signature down. Uh, they have to speak in such a way. They're like um, they are a person who's um, being Snow White. Whereas uh, if he was in a costume, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's you yeah, obviously yeah, just okay. dance I, about and stuff. But yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I have no idea. <laughs> who who would you go for? Um. Yeah, it's tricky. Um, but then again, all I'm thinking of right now is like I'd say uh, I don't know. I just I'm just thinking of like him in the film towards the end. But then that's not really a character apart from unless <laughs> unless, he, unless he plays he plays uh, like the character he played in that uh, was it finishing the game like film. That um, I love that bit. I love that bit where you see him like full in costume and it's like. You know, gone from li- literally, it looks like rags to riches. Like, you know, stumbling about in this massive green suit in the boiling hot sun. You know, and I th- that's probably why he comes across so likable because you kind of see in the journey with him. Um, and then in this film, like, he just looks absolutely brilliant. Like, just you know, I've not seen the film, um, <laughs> but it looks like it's one of them. You know kind of off the wall comedies um but yeah he, he he looks great and he looks like in his element like it's pure joy when he's when you see him in that moment he's just so happy it's yeah. just yeah and i i don't know i'm kind of cheering for him and he it does feel like the underdog finally won um, yeah he, and yeah I'm, i just feel like out of a lot of them yeah, he, from what I can tell, he was the one who made it in that sense. From from what I can tell so far, I'm interested to see where he's gone um, yeah. after this document. I, I, I'm, look at... I'm worried to see where they've gone as well at the same time, oh. because, well, that life is not exactly glamorous, is it? Like, and it seems if if that if that was made in 2007... You know, has it got worse for them out there now? Like, you know, arrests were happening at the time of this documentary. So has it got worse for them? You know, the mayor, you see parts in the documentary of the mayor of Hollywood. um, And he just downright doesn't want them there. um, Calls them panhandlers. 
Um, oh, but... He was the honorary mayor, though, wasn't he? he oh, was that's just, it. Um, yeah, sorry. Yeah, he was. I think he was just like awarded that title. I don't think he. Um, I know that they did. In- it seemed like at the time they just introduced new laws where they couldn't be, um, you know, actually trying to solicit tips without being given them. You know, yeah. like he, they can't force uh, themselves on each other. Um, but, um, but they kind of do in their yeah, own way. Like, but that's that's part of the the fun of the documentary as well is like uh, there's one moment where I, th- I think one tourist comes up it's uh superman and batman together for a photo and uh, the person gives uh i think batman the money and then the, I, th- I think superman's like um it's usually one each and just even that i'm just like oh it's brilliant like it's like it's, <laughs> they're trying to be so kind about it but also you know especially Batman with his temper, um, like I'd I'd worry about not paying him a tip. Yeah, because he does seem like aggressive straight away, like from <laughs> from the get go. Um, Definitely, he just I, I I do love that bit where yeah they they're having pictures together and he's kind of like starting to be mouthy towards. He's like just shouting at the other people <laughs> who are. Was it Spider Man? Is just like having lunch across the street and he's like, oh, <laughs> Spider Man doesn't smoke. <laughs> Yeah, because it uh, says he should uh, paint his face as a clown. Yeah. <laughs> paint his face, dye his hair green. Yeah. Clown. <laughs> um, let's go to... Let's, let's talk about Wonder Woman. So, Wonder Woman, uh, real name Jennifer Garrett. Um, mm-hmm. She's from Maynardville. <laughs> Um, which I've never heard of until this documentary. Never heard of that whole hole in the wall. <laughs> no, no. That is a quote from the documentary. Just, I, you know, I don't want anyone getting angry. That's a quote. <laughs> yeah, because, yeah, she had like kind of a, she, what did she say? She said from Tennessee first, didn't she? And then it's like if, if someone asked me where I'm from, I'd say, yeah, London. Like, especially if it's outside of the UK, I'd be like, yeah, London. Yeah. Because it's, People ain't you know. know. Yeah, exactly. You say where you're actually from, and people are like, oh, no, I don't know where that is. And you spend an hour drawing a map. <laughs> anyway. Um, London's just easier. Everyone just knows London. London. Yeah, everybody's from London. It's all good. Um, so, what did you think about when her dad said that she's named after a horse? <laughs> just awesome. Like, this is absolute gold. Like, when they cut back and and you see the parents, um, like you're kind of wondering what they're going to be like, um, and just that comment alone, and it looks like the mum's kind of caught off guard by it as well, and then she's but she knows it's true, so she has to explain it. Yeah, she's like, <laughs> oh, it's it's not a horse, uh, it's a donkey, <laughs> like because <laughs> what was it? She was like, oh. Uh, you know, males are called Jacks and uh, female donkeys are called Jennies and stuff like that. And uh, it's why would it's you just... even say that in the documentary about yeah, like, your, your daughter trying to make it into fame? Like... <laughs> the, the, the dad literally just like throws it out there. It's like, right, ready, here you go, catch. <laughs> my, favorite part was, my favorite part was uh, where he would just say something and then the mum would just correct whatever he just said. <laughs> <laughs> like he would just say something that's completely not true and or just something so, you know so abrupt and then the mum would like soften it slightly just she'd be like well, oh it's not really like that um like with that at the same time though there's a moment where um where wonder woman is talking about her parents and like her background a bit and she basically mentions that she's closer to her mum um and that her dad only saw her mistakes but not her you know the, her you know good side the good things that that she done um but then at the same time it cuts back to them the parents and the dad says something like about her cheerleading and about like they won like i don't know like national or state championships you know which is a massive big thing um but then the 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 mum uh comes back with oh no it wasn't that it, you know, and kind of says what it actually was, which was something smaller. Um, so I was like, oh, wow, that kind of shows that the, the dad kind of did see her goals, even if he didn't see him right. He kind of 
made them bigger for himself. Like I thought that was kind of sweet. Yeah, I can yeah, I can see what you mean like that. It's um it was, like it was subtle. It was really subtle. Um but yeah, I was just like, oh wow, that's kind of sweet. Uh, she did come across like kind of a bit of a runaway though, didn't she? Oh definitely. Like, 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 like she just wanted to get out of there. She's kinda like a, I, I, like, like I a can't... Cinderella kind of thing where she was um just wanted to get out of that place, make a name for herself. And I, I love that her parents supported her to do that. Um, Definitely. To, to send her up and just yeah, go up against the, the grain. Trying to, yeah. yeah, it must be so hard. It must be like uh, so oversaturated to go to be there and trying to just make some noise, you know, I mean, in a there, place where it's surrounded by it. So. There were parts of me that like I was thinking, like, I wonder why she was so eager to leave. Um, because it, you know, it could be just a case of, you know, I've lived in this town my entire life. You know, I'm done with it. I need to break out of here, kind of thing. Um, and a lot of people do that, and then they go and travel or do whatever. Um, so it could be a case of that. But then, like later, um, she, she's uh, at her, like I don't know, casting manager or something like at a meeting. Um, and uh, the casting manager says, I, I see you as a voluptuous kind of, you know, sexy kind of girl, you know, and they're the roles I'm going to send you for. Um, and she says she has a problem with that because of something from her past where she comes from. So I thought, oh, wow, you know, like, because it, it well, was she running away from something like that? Had she had a troubled past there? Like, again it doesn't really dig any further into it but it just leaves these little kind of drops yeah, of, you can... like where you can question things a bit yeah i can i can see what you mean though i didn't even think about that that makes that can, that makes a bit of sense um like and she comes from a, a really kind of you know church religious kind of background um and yeah. you know there's there's obviously stories that go around um but you, you know you just just random thoughts of yeah. why she may have left there but who knows it doesn't really dig any further in into why she left but as i say, it's a, a, another thing about the layers of the documentary i just want yeah she maybe wanted to go somewhere exciting to create her own like path in life and yeah and um, i mean the whole the whole thing is like really well especially for for her and for um the hulk the incredible hulk like they're chasing the american dream like that's what they're doing and and you know us in england we we hear that the american dream all the time but i don't think we truly understand it like americans like it you know it exists it, it, there is an american dream and you go and chase it um and that's kind of what those two are doing. Like, so maybe she is one of those people that was just like, you know, I'm, I, I can't live out life in this small town where I am, where I've grown up and, you know, watch me follow in my parents' footsteps or whatever. Uh, I want to break out. I want to chase the dream, you know. I thought it was a bit strange how the director just brings up what's going on with her relationship uh, in the documentary, it seems like it's almost kind of to have an emotional beat, because um, they, it does feel like they spend most of her part of the documentary exploring her relationship and her marriage and uh, how how she's dealt with how she's dealt with all that. Like you know, after leaving her parents, it's it's weird. It's I just feel it kind of felt a bit exploitive the way they kind of ask all that stuff on camera you don't but then it 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 feels like her life is kind of the the one that's kind of most delved into definitely yeah. like i don't i don't know why i don't know if 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 that's a case of she just gave them more permission than the other people did um or whether you know like you say it is kind of more exploiting of her alone yeah i don't know if it's because you know, when you went to her ha her house, it wasn't like completely full with like Wonder Woman stuff. Um, she wasn't as kind of quirky as the other characters. 
but I feel like she had, you know, you know, real dreams and uh, but they all have real dreams, I guess. But it just felt like they focused like on her personal relationships a lot more. Yeah. Um, Maybe again, yeah. No, I I I totally get you. Um, but at the same time, maybe it's all they had to work with. If that was, yeah. you know, if it is kind of, to a degree, it's interviews slash fly on the wall. Um, you know, if that's what was going on in her life, maybe that's all they could show. You know, like you say, she didn't have this room full of Wonder Woman stuff or just this you know all this other stuff to delve into um but yeah it does feel like she's singled out in that degree of like of of looking into her life and where she came from and all this yeah they definitely focus on her a lot more in that sense um but i guess they also focus on maxwell batman allen which best name <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I don't think this is obviously like. Well, Batman is definitely not his middle name. One hundred percent. But Maximus Allen, I think, is his name. Um, oh, no, you, yeah, it's... you see it on actual um, like police, you know, photos, like uh, mugshot photos. Yeah, because he goes by Maxwell as well, doesn't he? Yeah, it seems. So, yeah, Maxwell, Batman, <laughs> Allen. <laughs> <laughs> Maxwell Batman Allen, um, born in Texas, uh, looks like George Clooney apparently, um, <laughs> which I can I can see I can see that there uh, there there is like it's not a double like it's a, by no means a double, but there's a resemblance, one hundred percent. There's like you, if you would say, oh he looks like someone off of ER, you go oh, it's probably that George Clooney guy. <laughs> like you know <laughs> that, that's the one you would jump to first I feel like he would look he would look more like him if I watched ER and then tried to draw definitely or yeah, uh, like watching ER I don't know why I'm going to ER it's because they mention it in the documentary yeah. Um, but yeah like maybe watching ER very kind of blurry eyed drunk yeah, like just... just like oh that's that guy off that superhero that's Batman Guys, that's bad. Oh, and it, well, hey, it actually turned out to be Batman. Uh, well, there we, it, unfortunately, there's there's this Reddit where um, it's people who have met someone, uh, what they think is famous. They think it's like some big star, and then they've taken a picture, and it's only once they've re- uploaded and uh, put it shown on the world. That they, yeah, shown the world that they realize actually it's not them whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. like, awesome. Um, I can't remember what the subreddit it's called, but I find it and I put it in the show. Is he on it? Uh, no, but he should be. I feel yeah. like if you if you met him, but then he is famous now anyway because of this. So, what do we think about him? Do you reckon? Do he's, we think <laughs> he's just we... incredible? Like, it's... what a character! He's like he's like the Kramer of this, like like Seinfeld's <laughs> Kramer. Like that's how I describe him. Like he's that character. Um, it's just it's batshit crazy. Like, excuse the pun, but it's just so out there. Do we think he has a black belt in Taekwondo? One hundred percent no. <laughs> just about... being, like the the video of him training karate or taekwondo or whatever it was, and it's just like he's so adamantly watching the trainer and he's, like so out of sync and out of time. And it's like you've never thrown a punch in your life, like. Oh, it's just incredible. What about Tiger Kung Fu? Or uh, Ninjutsu? Or, uh, <laughs> or the Hantan combat that he learned from the Special Forces training? Yeah, I, I, I struggle to believe any of that. I, I'd be pleasantly surprised if it came out and that he knew even at least one of them. Um, but yeah, I struggle to believe it. Like, it's just, it's comical. He's, you know, even other characters in, in the documentary say, like, he kind of lives in his own world. Um, even his his wife or his girlfriend, his wife, is it? Yes. 
Uh, yes, his wife. I think, I think wife. his wife. Yeah. Wife. Like even she says at one point, like I'd only believe fifty percent of what he says is actually true. <laughs> he kind of lives in this fantasy world of like. I don't know. It's like he's done. It's it's one of them people who like you could say, oh, I've I've done this. I I went on a holiday here, and you're telling them about your holiday, and then they'll be like, yeah, but I've been there, but I also done this, or I've been there and here. Um, he's one of them guys. Um, is incredible. It's just it, there's so many funny. Like my probably my funniest moment is um him like it's wait and flight a group of tourists to walk around a corner and he jumps out and scares them but it's the whole movement with the cape and everything and then the <laughs> awkwardness after it it's just ah oh, it's so good he's he's brilliant like he is, yeah. he, like like you said earlier you could have a whole documentary on him alone but he, apparently he was also a bodyguard and an or slash a stunt car driver like um at one point he, he seems like he's he was also in like possibly the italian mafia um, yeah, um let's call it an italian guy <laughs> yeah he's very italian yeah. <laughs> is that like he, he's a storyteller that's what he is he's a storyteller um just uh, could you imagine having a drink with him and just like you wouldn't care whether it was true or not just it would be absolute gold um but yeah he's a storyteller like everything he says like there's this kind of hint of doubt um and usually quite a large <laughs> hint of doubt <laughs> just like he's 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 like he might as well be a character from one of our british soaps like you know, nobody lives that life. Nobody is in that many car crashes, that many, you know, breakups or, you know, infidelity. <laughs> you know, he lives that life in his head. Like, everything's happened to him. My favourite part is, like, he has, like, kind of a tell. So every time he's about to say something completely crazy, he would, like, kind of lick his, like, top corner of his, <laughs> of his mouth. <laughs> so he, like, sticks his tongue out completely. Um and it's it's just every single time he says something completely crazy, it's just like he says he does that. Yeah, it's my... almost like that pause for four. Like, yeah. okay, how 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 can I make myself sound awesome? Like, like he is Batman. Like, that's like that is like the comedy kind of perception of Batman. Like, almost like even like Lego Batman. Like, I'm Batman. Like, it's just this cool character and. Like he comes cr- across as the epitome of that in this. Do you, <laughs> do we reckon he had a body count? <laughs> he left a very very large body count, I believe. Um, I've got the quote of this, by the way. It says, <laughs> "Like, hang on, says hang that... on. When you're talking about this, you've got to explain like who he's talking to and oh, no, th- what he is, looks this... like." No, this is to the um this is this is not to the um therapist. Um, oh right. right. The, no, the psychiatrist. Like this is the part where he says, um, there are only two ways you get out of it. You either die or everybody else dies. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else died. And and he says that's pretty much how I got out. I was the only man standing. <laughs> the only man left standing. <laughs> um, yeah, just incredible. Yeah, there's a bit where he's uh, talking to his uh, well, the psychiatrist, like dressed as Batman, um, <laughs> and he's basically told them that there's a body count <laughs> um, because he's was it someone he loved got into a car accident and then he basically killed them. It was and... an accident that was meant yep. for him. An accident meant for him. Yeah. Yeah. And... and then when <laughs> he found out who done it, that he he. Um... He went. He he went off. I went after them, so to speak. I believe is what he says. <laughs> um, and he says I uh, left a rather large body count. Like, and then like when the the uh, therapist is like kind of trying to you know dig a bit deeper and get more out of him, just his his rebuttal to everything is like, well, the uh, I there was no you know there's no evidence. There's there's 
<laughs> everything's cleaned up basically it was a lot easier in the 80s to hide this kind of stuff where it isn't so much now like <laughs> and yeah and he says like there's no statue of limitations on murder <laughs> Steps, no, obviously statue of limitation, sorry, not statue. <laughs> and like his face at that point. <laughs> uh, and also the Hulk uh, doubting him, just being like, like, uh, I don't know, man. Like, he... Yeah, it's like, until I see any of this or or actually, you know, hear it's true, I, I don't know if I can believe it. Like, But they know, they they obviously know him. They, you know, like his wife, they probably humour him to a degree. Um, and just let him live in this world as long as he's not hurting anyone. Um, and as you know, if he can rein his temper in, then let him live in this world. Plus, there was the bit where he goes to a gun range and he's like, Oh, uh, it? I'll have well, he picks he picks a gun. The guy's was it a um, <laughs> it's a Beretta, Beretta, isn't it? Beretta. Yeah, and it's yeah, like, he, he... Are you sure? And it's like, Well, unless, unless you've got a better one. <laughs> And then he goes to and he fires. But do you reckon he's ah, is he nervous of it? I'm not too sure if he fires his, guns often. Or... His his hand looked shaky. Like I was watching that closely. Um, yeah. And his lat hand went, but like the first pull of that trigger, his hand did look shaky. So at that point, I was like, has he used a gun before? Saying that, I <laughs> earlier this year, I uh, I used a gun. I went uh, was it clay pigeon shooting? Yeah. And the kickback like on the oh, gun yeah. is like it's, it's something it's that you can't yeah it's i got like my arm was like completely bruised because i like man rubbish it um <laughs> yeah, i went yeah, like, i the... went to like a little gun range at like this kind of activity center uh for a stag do um yeah. it's like one of the like activities we've done um and yeah same like and you don't realize how heavy they are as well mm. like like you know you remember being a kid if you bought toy guns they was obviously made of plastic, made for kids, you know, light, lightweight. And then you pick up this real thing and you're like, wow, that's, and like you say, the kickback, insane. Yeah. But I would feel if you were as trained as he professes to be, those shakes wouldn't be there. But then I suppose you could say maybe it's been a long time since he used a gun. And if he did murder someone, it probably would be quite a, you know, traumatic experience picking up he's the probably, gun again. Yeah, he's probably having like flashbacks and memories and stuff of it. He's like, he's like, "Damn you, Tony!" <laughs> <laughs> he was very Italian, Ian. Thank God it was the A's. Otherwise, we wouldn't have him in the documentary. <laughs> um, he so the rest of the documentary, he gets arrested for using the toilet. Um, uh, like like for picketers. Um, who are like protesting? Um, and it seems it's weird because after that, like, the, I'm guessing the bit where it, they interview him as like a security guard on like a um a film, film, set, film set, yeah. He seems like really like toned down, doesn't he? Um, I don't know if like him as, getting, as uh, close to kind of air quotes normal as he is in the entire documentary. I feel like it's maybe he's ever realized how he's coming across or he's maybe in, maybe even like in a therapy thing now. Maybe it's like a, um, him could, getting arrested. One of his things was, you know, therapy. Could be. Um, yeah. Or it could just be, you know, his, it, it looked very much to me at that point, like that was a kind of more, that's more of a, he's got to be more serious in that position, like being a security for what he was doing but also he looked at it as an opportunity to get noticed like you know i I look like george clooney so hopefully by working on this film set i'll be noticed and they'll be like hey i'm gonna make a million dollar movie with you like he's still living in that dream to a degree like it's it's always there i think with him yeah i just thought it was he didn't seem like himself at all no he was completely it was like a different character um, but I guess, as you said, he was at work. And yeah, he is representing that company. Well, just security. That's it. It's, how do I? When I saw it, I was like, "How do I know he's not just dressed as a security guy? Because all he's got <laughs> is a t-shirt with security written on it." That's and what I'm just like, <laughs> exactly. But like, how do I know? Like that—that's his actual job. 
And Matt, he's not his, just sat there and like ask Matt, his body's a weapon. His body is a weapon. <laughs> <laughs> but, but again, layers, man. Like there's so much, so much. And he is just like I mean, if you haven't if you're listening to this and you haven't watched the documentary, you know, that's you probably you a bad choice. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you need to watch it anyway. Like it's and if you have watched it and it's the first time you've ever watched it, I can probably guarantee it's one you're going to cherish and you'll want to watch again because um, it is just brilliant. Absolutely. And on that note, I think we're going to have a break right now uh, until we uh, go check out the post stuff because we haven't looked into any of the post stuff um, that's happened since the documentaries come out, what's happened to them because we don't want to spoil it for ourselves. So we have a, sh- a break. <laughs> a little musical intermission and we'll be straight back after that and we're back um i struggled to find a lot about certain people there's a few like obviously superman the biggest news for superman is that he died last year yeah man ah uh, that's it was in Bad. November. It wasn't even that long ago. It was like, yeah, did less it, than did six it, months ago. So, did it mention how he died or? I, I think it was heart attack or heart failure. Let me double check. Um, it's. I'm not. I, to must I did remember seeing that he had died. Um, but like, I don't know. Did you see what happened to him before that? Yes. Oh, that was. He got like um, horrible, like, beaten up with a golf club or something. Like most of his teeth were knocked out, um, and all his money was stolen. Uh, did you hear what happened to the suit? They stole his Superman suit and then burnt it. Yeah, it's fucked. Which was, um, what's evil? Yeah, that's that's just horrible. Yeah. That's just uh... it's pure evil. Like I saw, um, I saw one little like clip of him like, talking, um, like, since that happened. And he looked like a broken man. Like, it obviously, you know, knocked a lot out of him, that happening to him. Um, But, yeah, he wasn't the same guy. Like, it it looked like a guy who'd given up, you know? Yeah, it's just... quite sad. It's horrible. Yeah, because you see him in the documentary, he's, like, so hopeful, and it's, like, to find out that that stuff has happened to him, it's just... Yeah, you just it's horrible. Well, you, um, it looks like, well, he split from his wife because I, I saw a thing and all his, or he'd lost his house, become homeless, um, and all of his memorabilia was in like storage. Yeah, huh. I, uh, like one yeah, of the, you know, that. them like lock up storage sort of place, like a garage. It was all in one of those, like on that, uh, fucking. Excuse my language. Um, Storage Wars or whatever, that terrible TV show. One of them. Yeah. Um, I see that he was the focus of another documentary about him coming back to Hollywood. Um, It was called Hollywood... uh, Was it Hollywood Boulevard Superman? There was like um, uh, him coming back and like it's how he's trying to get his life back together after the attack. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'd be so interested be in watching watch. that. Yeah, definitely. Um, we we'll put that in the sh- show notes. Um, and yeah, it's just it, horrible it, to find it out. It does and... feel like like just stuff just went awfully for him. Um, one thing after the other. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, for someone to attack him and like to the level of, or at least from the little I've seen and read, um, you know the degree of damage they or the person tried to do to him it's just well it's horrible like horrible to think of like because you kind of feel like you know this character now um it's just yeah it's just sad yeah it's especially since he was like saying that he has the fame but he doesn't have the fortune he says that in the documentary and i don't know i guess it never really took off no um like, it's, it's, I think, 
I think he was chasing a dream. I think it all. I like. I've been thinking about it since, and I think he was chasing a dream that, like, because it it goes on how he was working at first. He was working like uh, waiter in tables, um, yeah, and how people were telling him, "You look like Superman," um, and then it looks like he kind of just took off with that, and that became his his life, his life's dream. But it's like, you know, there, you can't be, you know, just because you look like someone doesn't mean you can step in their shoes and live their life. Like, but I think he truly believed that that would take him to where he needed to be. But it's sad. It's just sad that, you know, it's, well, it's sad to find out he's dead. And like it says, he... Um, from what I read, it said he'd been doing it 30 years. Yeah. It's... 30 years doing that. Like, he, he, uh. you know, I've, I've never been to Hollywood, but, you know, if, if, if I was going and I didn't know he died and I'd seen this documentary, I'd be like, that's, I want to find him. Like, I want my picture with him and, I'll, and I will tip. Like, um, but yeah, it's just sad to think. You know, it was obviously a staple of of Hollywood, really. Like, so I guess in a way, he did find fame, but like you say, he just didn't have the fortune with it. And like he said, he never got the fortune. But you know, we're talking about him, right? So yeah. we're on the you know completely different country. So you know, he made it in that sense. Um. Yeah, it's just. Yeah, horrible to find out after watching that. It's just like such a kind of upbeat, positive. There's like a lot of optimism, I, like towards the end. It's like where the future's gonna go. I did really think though, like because I genuinely like I've seen I've seen other documentaries um, with these characters in, um, but I've never I've never thought to look up and think oh, I wonder you know if they're still out there like and just find all this out now. But I did have an inkling that possibly well more than one of them would be dead um but i thought just from uh, living a, a hard life and continuously trying to chase that dream but it never it never come into fruition for them and it just them going down this spiral into like homelessness and then just poverty and you know eventually death or getting into you know bad drugs and, and ODing or something like I thought there were going to be some horror stories um, but yeah none quite as sad as, as this one like just the whole story is just it's because he was he, 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 he did portray that kind of hope and that's what Superman's all about um, so yeah it's quite sad Wonder Woman it obviously looks like she's done quite a lot since yeah, she's in the. Was it My Name Is Earl? <laughs> I won them. Um, Serious. She's in, yeah, she's also in. Well, no, only in for like one episode, I think. But she's also in New Girl. Oh wow! Well, um, I was gonna say it looks like she's done a few films as well. Yeah, um, I think yeah, she's doing films right now. There's, um, I don't, any particular ones that stand out? Uh, no, I just literally looked to see what she'd done. <laughs> like... I, I she's also really in True it. Blood as well. Oh wow! I've never seen it. I've heard it's good. I yeah, I think she was in uh, one episode of that. Um, yeah, she's definitely I don't know made it in some the bigger TV shows. Um, I, I couldn't find anything on Hulk, man. Yeah, he's quite hard. Like, so I looked into him, and all I could find was he's done two films since the film mentioned in. Um, yeah, mentioned in the documentary that well, uh, the fifth something one. something came up on mine saying uh, honorary honorary achievement award that oh, yeah? he won, but I don't know if it's him or someone with the same name. I didn't look further into it, but it came up in uh, my Google search for that name. Uh, but yeah, I was like. Um... I mean, I Joe have... McQueen, I suppose that's quite like, that could be a popular name. Well, it so. came up Joseph McQueen. Oh. Um, I 
I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Like, unless you see a picture of him, it's kind of hard to say, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I I really wanted to find out like if he'd done loads more, but I really couldn't see a lot on him. Have you looked into what happened to Batman? Uh, like I say, I um, in the like the brief time I've looked, I've I've seen, I've seen there's a uh, like a podcast. Um, I'm seeing it through YouTube, so it's video yeah. video podcast. Um, yeah. The comic book geeks. Uh, it's episode forty four. Um, in in. Uh, yeah, called Batman, um, and he's the guest on it. Uh, and I, I've literally watched like five minutes of the intro of it, not even five minutes, three minutes of the intro. But just in that alone, like it's 30 minutes long on YouTube, so like probably worth seeking out if you haven't seen it already. Um, but yeah, on that alone, I'm already, as soon as this is done, I'm going to watch it because it's him. And I'm like, and it's from six years ago, um, so not quite as up to date as I'd like it to be, but it's more of that character. And I'd pay for a whole entire Batman Batman franchise with him as Batman. I, for the rest of my life, I, I'd be happy with that as Batman. Um, but yeah, like I noticed um, the the two guys running the, the podcast. Um, they're uh, they're they're obviously asking him questions, um, and they it looks like they ask about Superman, um, and it looks like they had a falling out. But again, I'm not far enough in to know what happened or if he's even going to explain it. Um, but you might know more on this. I don't know. Well, we we'll link we we'll link that in the uh, the show notes anyway, um, just so people can like deep dive and investigate themselves. Um, because we've only looked into this for about say twenty minutes. Yeah. Um, I had some stuff saved um, already that I do want to talk about. Um, did he do a film? Stuff... He did. Right. He did do a film. Uh, it was around the same time as uh, the documentary come out. So it was about two thousand and seven. Right. Um, but I think it was just like a little like a bit part um, in it. It's not um, the film we see him in 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 the documentary. No. The, uh... No. no. <laughs> so. That is that is on his IMDb, um, but he had, his most recent film was that I think. Yeah. Um, but I did find out that he had a YouTube channel right. where he attempted to debunk a lot of the, what he called lies from the documentary. <laughs> um, so I found this. I found this on Reddit, um, and it's like a Reddit post from five years ago, um, and it just explains that. It's he like he do like these short videos and he would like film his life as like a costume performer and uh, he wound up to get into like a fist fight uh, that attracted some sh- trolls to his channel um, and soon his videos would become nothing but him raging out about you know the trolls on his video and basically inviting him to fight him. Do, hang on, this was his YouTube vid- uh, um, channel. Yeah, if you does search, it still so exist? Search, his. So his channel I know doesn't exist anymore, but his um Do the videos. His videos Yeah, I think they have been re uploaded oh, somewhere. Awesome. Um like someone saved them. Um I've seen I've seen one or two and it's like basic, you know, basically <laughs> it's like just him explaining angry. Is it is he angry? Uh well I mean I've seen like one of the first ones that comes up, it's him just kind of like absolutely kicking up in this in the street screaming at people. Um <laughs> But that's not one of his videos. That was like him being like exposed by someone else. Um, <laughs> basically, I think. But there's, uh, yeah, there's like things where he would like basically people would arrange to meet up, like as like you know a, sh- a presenter of another show, like uh, say like Howard Stern, and uh, they they would convince him that he's you know to meet up and that, and then it's just the troll thing again. And oh, what they're taking the mick out of him? Yeah, yeah. See that? No, no. Oh no! I mean, as in, like they would say that. Uh... Oh, what it wasn't actually Howard Stern. No, no, it was it's it like was some... Artie, Artie Lang, Lang, Lang from. Um... It was basically someone from. It was it was basically someone from a radio show, and they would pretend that they were going to meet up and like discuss stuff, and then and in the end they just make 
fun of him and but that um, was part of their radio show to make fun of him but he, obviously he wasn't on in on the joke oh no no it's not it's not the radio show at all it's literally some randomer the troll oh, on the internet right yeah that's what I was saying yeah. so it's someone pretending okay. to be them yeah um, yeah so he would uh, what was it he also like it says on here that uh, he also ex- expounded upon his backstory in his uh, videos right and the the Reddit poster, um, J Bibby, J Bibby, um, said that the dude is delusional, uh, delusional, sorry, um, and he quit YouTube a few months after that. But his backstory, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, this is summarized by the person who wrote this post. Um, says, uh, keep in mind, it was completely serious when we recorded this. He worked as a smuggler of antique guns and fine cigars in Texas. Essentially, he worked with a team of criminals that were trained by a a rogue army officer named J.J. Raven. They included, uh, um, in brackets, I wish I was kidding, an Asian medicine man who used holistic remedies, uh, an explosives expert, (laughs) which... (laughs) which, It's so cool. I love him, man. He's the best. which, uh, Which was him. He was the explosives expert. <laughs> of course he was. Of course he was. <laughs> as well as a, <laughs> as well as a submarine captain who was it who sub they could smuggle illicit cargo from Mexico. Um he says one of his crew betrayed him and then killed Max's bride to be. So of course Max tracked him down to Mexico and was about to kill him in the cargo warehouse when he decided to spare him. Something <laughs> something went wrong and the warehouse exploded. What? <laughs> oh my god. Like, this is awesome. In brackets he says, um, Literally exploded, like in a movie and exploded. Um, of course, yeah. Like how I've seen. And, <laughs> and and then him and JJ Raven jumped out the ste- the second story window into a bay to avoid the explosion. And apparently that's his backstory. That's what he did. That's where that's where the body count happened. He basically apparently blew up a warehouse and somehow jumped out of a second story window into the bay to survive it all. So I'd watch that movie. Uh, I don't know. It, it, it does need his own film. It'd be great if he just did like his. I'd watch it. Like, especially if everyone, well, like if the people making it knew that the audience is in on how over the top ridiculous it should be like it, i i know that would make money but he's got to play yeah. himself yeah i think it should be like a mockumentary is like i mean but you know he would obviously pretend it's real and stuff but it's just it's just insane it's just absolutely crazy um i just want to see if you want to see more of batman uh, from this documentary, you should go check out obviously YouTube because um, there's loads of stuff of his stuff on there. But what you need to check out is there's a, a another documentary called Reenactors. Yeah, which I I've seen, you've seen Matt. Um, I think these two documentaries complement each other perfectly because uh, they're filmed at the same time, more or less, as each other. Um, and it's almost from like a different point of view. So people in this documentary, uh, Confessions of a Superhero. Uh, will like the people in the background will be in like the front runners in this other documentary, which is you know conveniently filmed at the same time. It's not it's nothing to do with the guy who made this documentary. Um, I just I lo- and I love that other documentary because it shows you Batman from like almost another point of view. It, it focuses on Batman more and it shows you that he doesn't just he's not just Batman the whole time. He um, is Freddy Krueger at some <laughs> points as well. Um, but I do need to yeah. watch that again now. Now I've watched this again after it's probably been a good maybe three, three, four years since I last seen this. So yeah. roughly about the same time for reenactors. So 
yeah, I feel like I need to. Is that on YouTube as well? Uh, I think when I last checked, that's. I think you can find it on Amazon, uh, Amazon Prime. Anyway. Yeah. Um, or you might be able to find it on is other that... streaming services and that. Like definitely, it's definitely on Amazon Prime. That's the sure one that's called Prime. Jack Sparrow as well, isn't it? Oh, yeah, Jack Sparrow. If I was Jack Sparrow. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I need to rewatch that, man. Yeah, that was good. Uh, maybe we'll do a uh, follow up one of this and we can put, uh, we can do reenactors next time. Yeah, um, man. Because I think it's equally as great. Um, it's its own thing. It kind of, yeah, I just love it. I just love seeing it's it interview. What is it? Um, they interviewed was it Marilyn Monroe and all that quite a lot more, and uh, Jack Sparrow. Any basically anybody who's mentioned in the first part of this documentary where it's like, oh, here's the people you see. Yeah, it'll go into that a lot more. So, yeah, because um, like Marilyn, like you, you only see a glimpse of of her in in this. Um, and reenactors, there is it is much more like you get to see a lot more of her. Like because in this, you you literally get that little glimpse, and already you're like you're intrigued, like because she's kind of out there in in like she's in one kind of major scene where she has like lines, so to speak, like in in confessions. Um, yeah, she's having like a meltdown on this. Yeah, tips, a, yeah, so. about pe- not being paid. Which again is totally understandable, like if that's your your job. Um, but yeah, uh, you get to see a lot more of her in reenactors. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm gonna have to rewatch that. But I am 100 percent so desperate to watch this Batman thing now, <laughs> um, just because I, I it sounded to me like he was like the interview guys saying like you know, you and Superman had a falling out and then Batman's kind of in in Maxwell's way. Maxwell, Maximus's way. Um, it's just like bigging himself up in the best way he can. Um, so I just think it's going to be, it's probably going to be a train wreck, but I can't wait to watch it. Yeah, I, def- I definitely want to see that as well. Send me the link. Um, yeah, yeah. And as I said, like anything we've mentioned about Linkwise, uh, we'll put them in the show notes, um, so you'd be able to check that out too. Um, who, if you have any feed, in your sorry? opinion, sorry, in your opinion, would you say who or who would you say has done the best since? Like, who's would you say Wonder Wonder Woman's like kind of made it in the best? Well, I suppose she has in terms of what she's done in her acting career. Uh, I would say, I don't know. It's kind of it's it's kind of a toss up between Wonder Woman, but she had like kind of bit parts in say uh, quite famous TV shows. Um, but uh, was it Christopher Dennis Superman? He did do quite well after he was in like a lot of um, films, mainly playing himself, like in the background of stuff. Um, yeah. So he'd be playing. It's. It's almost there's, like like this. There's like a lot of series about him. People are obsessed with him. When, it's almost when it like happened. this is his legacy. This documentary is kind of what put him on the map, really. Like to, mm-hmm. for the for the world's eyes to see, not just the tourists. He like, is the face of this documentary, isn't he? Like yeah. if you um, if you see the DVD cover, it's him on like the therapist couch, like laying down. Um, but like, which... do you kind of see the? Um the similarities between like this kind of being him being the face of this documentary, but Batman kind of stole it. And like in the competition, like it's the same thing. (laughs) Like, Uh, yeah, yeah. I suppose Batman did steal the limelight in that as well. And it's just like, Oh, it's poetic. Like that, the whole symmetry between that and the documentary itself like on a kind of meta level is yeah it's kind of out there and that's it for another episode if you've liked this please subscribe uh if you want to follow us on social media and see what we're doing next then you can do that by looking at our show notes thanks for listening until next time